Hello everybody, I am Mahdi Akawani from the University of Togo. Today I will be presenting our project SOS, which is a collaborative effort with Haibo Zhang, David Ayers, and Apo Sarawani. Every TCP data transfer begins with this question. At what rate should data be sent? Sending data too fast results in congestion while sending it too slowly underutilizes the available bandwidth. To determine the rate, TCP employs a rate control state machine. TCP initiates data transfer at a low rate and then exponentially increases this rate to determine the optimal sending rate after receiving feedback, after receiving feedback from the network. I mean, uh, this feedback can be uh, packet loss, uh, extra delay, or even change in the uh, delivery rate. This slow and sluggish start often results in bandwidth under underutilization. This bandwidth underutilization is noticeable, especially in today's network with large bandwidth delay product, networks with higher bandwidth and maybe larger round trip time. After a slow start, TCP enters the steady state to fine tune the rate and uh, send the remaining data accordingly. This slide shows one of our real world experiments where a PC in New Zealand downloads a file from a server in the United States. Here in flight, which is limited by a congestion window, which is limited and controlled by congestion window, denotes the number of sent data packets that haven't been acknowledged yet. They are in flight between the sender and receiver, and the sender hasn't received acknowledgement for these packets. So it stores these packets inside a retransmission list, and the size is called congestion window. As you can see, the number of in-flight packets increases exponentially and in the steady state, it oscillates around congestion window star. In this presentation, CW in the star is congestion window size when optimal rate is achieved. Please note that the amount of total delivered data shown in brown here linearly increases at the rate theta in the steady state because the bottleneck link is saturated and the bottleneck link cannot mm, send data faster than this rate. We added this dashed green line to represent a hypothetical scenario where the delivery rate is theta right from the start. This green line highlights the capability for transferring a larger amount of data during the initial phase. For example, in this test, as you can see, delivering five megabytes of data takes almost three times longer using slow start compared to the hypothetical scenario. So an improvement in early round trip times can reduce flow completion time. Uh, this metric, flow completion time, is notable in delivering small data objects such as web pages, photos, and short videos, which are prevalent in, in today's network, like social media and uh, similar uh, applications, data transfer. We switched the congestion control algorithm from cubic to BBR and repeated the same test. As you can see, a notable gap still exists between the actual delivery and optimal delivery. I mean, between green and brown curves. This slide, uh, this slide showed the dynamics of congestion window for five separate flows sharing the same bottleneck link in our testbed in our local testbed. The fifth data transfer initiates after the link has already been saturated by the other TCP flows. As shown in the figure, cubic is sensitive to packet loss, and it terminates the exponential growth upon detection of the first packet loss. As you can see, cubic's early exit from slow start delays achieving a fair share of bandwidth and optimal delivery rate. To enhance the delivery rate during slow start, our proposal SOS 
accelerates the growth of the congestion window in early round trip times when it seems safe. Uh, in a slow start, the growth factor is always two. It means that CWND doubles each round trip time. Uh, please see the gray curve in the figure. However, SUS employs a growth factor of four when congestion window is expected to grow in the next round trip time, when the congestion window is expected to continue its exponential growth in the next round trip time. This allows SUS to quadruple congestion window, I mean, to use the growth factor of four when it's significantly below congestion window star. Otherwise, it follows the traditional slow start by using a growth factor of two. As you can see in this figure, SUS employs a growth factor of four in round two and three, and because in round four, uh, CWND is getting closer to CWND star, it uses the growth factor of two, similar to traditional slow start. Our first challenge here is determining the method by which SOS predicts the likelihood of exponential growth in the next round trip time. To address this challenge, SOS relies on Cubic's high start. High start is a feature inside Cubic, integrated inside the Cubic. It uses the length of act train and observed queuing delay for the prediction. By, by the length of act train, I mean the time taken to receive the first act and last act in one round trip time. So SUS uses the length of act train and observed queuing delay for the prediction. It relies on Cubic's high start criteria. <clears throat> However, uncontrolled acceleration in congestion window growth can result in burst and packet loss. To prevent these issues, the second challenge involves controlling the transmission of additional data packets. To this end, SUS employs a combination of act clocking and packet pacing techniques. Act clocking mimics slow star and sends twice packet upon receiving one acknowledgement. This, help, this helps maintaining a high start functionality and the estimation of the growth factor G. On the other hand, in the pacing period, additional data packets are spaced out to reduce buffer pressure, to reduce buffer pressure and packet loss. Let us, take, uh, let us use the example and visualize packet transmission in SOS. In this figure, you can compare the growth in slow start and SOS. When SOS is enabled, the second and third round trip times the growth factor is four, and in and uh, the growth factor is two when congestion window is getting closer to the optimal value congestion window star. So SOS also employs uh, guard intervals to ensure that the packet pacing, the pacing period, doesn't affect the clocking period and high start functionality. We have integrated SOS in the Linux kernel, and it is available as an open source project on GitHub. SOS is a sender side mechanism that facilitates possible future wide deployments. It is lightweight and extends the memory usage by only 40 bytes per each connection. It also has a low CPU usage. For testing SOS, we used a diverse set of cloud servers and off-the-shelf hardware connected through various types of link. As shown in the figure, our internet scale testbed consists of servers located in seven different geographical locations. Clients are in Sweden and New Zealand. They are connected to the internet via different link types, 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet. This combination forms 28 testing scenarios with varying or round trip time, bottleneck bandwidth, and cross-traffic pattern, cross patterns. For testing under controlled setting, 
as well as determined extreme conditions, we evaluated SAS in a local test bed too. This test bed is composed of five client server pairs interconnected through a dumbbell topology utilizing two Linux routers. As shown in this figure, we have a bottleneck link with adjustable rate and buffer size. In one of our experiments, a 4G Android smartphone in New Zealand downloads a file from a Google Cloud engine in the United States. As shown in the figure, congestion window growth is faster when SUS is enabled, the red curve. So optimal congestion window is achieved earlier when SUS is enabled. However, the accelerated growth doesn't result in extra packet delay. And as shown here, round trip time curves, I mean, gray and black curves have similar behavior. Using data from the same experiment, we plotted this figure. As expected, total delivered data is higher when SUS is on. For example, as shown by dashed black lines here, a two megabyte data transfer takes two seconds when SUS is off, while it takes almost 1.2 seconds when SUS is on, uh, roughly 35% improvement in this case. Please note that both curves grow at the same rate theta once the exponential growth has ended. This slide presents two of the 28 experiments we conducted to evaluate improvement in flow compilation time. Here, our server is hosted on a Google Compute Engine in Tokyo, while our two clients are located in Sweden. Please note that the curves represent average value across 50 iterations. And the standard deviations are illustrated by shaded areas. After reviewing the result of all 28 tests, we observed that SAS consistently outperformed both PBR and Cubic. Additionally, we found that higher round trip times and bottleneck bandwidth result in greater FCT improvement. Uh, higher round trip time and higher bandwidth deliver a higher bandwidth results in greater improvements in uh, flow compilation times moreover despite variations in the bottleneck bandwidth in wireless scenarios we still observe improvement in flow compilation time Throughout the experiments, we observed that packet pacing reduces burstiness and buffer pressure. This in turn leads to a reduction in packet loss rate. That's why BBR in our experiments showed a lower packet loss rate compared to cubic, regardless of whether SUS was enabled or disabled. As a conclusion, as shown in this example, we observed that enabling SOS reduces packet loss rate in cubic. This slide presents one of the experiments we conducted to investigate the impact of SOS on fairness. In this particular test within our local test bed, a new TCP flow initiates when the bottleneck link has already been saturated by four flows. We used a fairness index and observed that it is higher with SAS enabled. When SAS is enabled, this fairness index is higher, which means better fairness. We repeated this test across various buffer sizes and various minimum round trip times and found that SAS doesn't compromise fairness while it improves flow compression time. In another experiment, we evaluated the stability of a large flow sharing a bottleneck link with 12 smaller flows. We observed that enabling SOS for the small flows didn't affect the large flow's completion time. We repeated this test with BBR and varying minimum round trip time for the large flow. Additionally, we tested with different bottleneck buffer sizes. 
after reviewing all the results, we found that enabling SOS doesn't adversely impact the stability of large flows. We are now concluding with a summary of our project. SOS is a lightweight Sunderside mechanism to the cubic algorithm. It aims to address bandwidth, and bandwidth under utilization during the TCP slow start phase. It accelerates congestion window growth when it seems safe. Moreover, it employs a mix of packet clocking and packet pacing techniques to mitigate the packet loss rate. We implemented SAS within the Linux kernel and it is publicly available on GitHub. In terms of performance impact, SAS has shown promising results. And for future work, integrating SAS with BBR is a potential uh, avenue.